Hello dear friends, this is your personal English coach Divyam here and in this video we are going to understand a short story written by Hans Christian Andersen. This is called The Little Match Girl. On my screen you can see the original story and on the right side I have mentioned the meanings of difficult words. So while I'm explaining you can pause the video and note down the meanings in your textbook so that it's easier for you to remember just the day before your English exams. I've taken the story from www.onlineliterature.com So let's begin. First paragraph. Most terribly cold it was. It snowed and it was nearly quite dark. An evening, the last evening of the year. In this cold and darkness, there went along the street a poor little girl, bareheaded and with naked feet. When she left home, she had slippers on, it is true. But what was the good of that? They were very large slippers, which her mother had hitherto worn. So large were they, and the poor little thing lost them as she scuffled away across the street because of two carriages that rolled by dreadfully fast many difficult words that you can learn first one is bareheaded which means without covering one's head there was nothing covered on that girl's head hitherto is until now scuffled is move in a hurried or confused or awkward way dreadfully is extremely so the story opens with a background or a scene wherein it was extremely cold the temperature was too low and it was evening sun had already set so it was dark and it says last evening of the year how can it be a last evening of any year it can be only on 31st of December or they call it New Year's Eve in other words in this New Year's Eve, there was a poor girl who had nothing to cover on her head. So the word used for that is bareheaded. She had nothing to cover under her feet as well. Why was that? Because when she left home, she didn't have slippers. And what happened after that? The slipper were of her mother's, which she lost. How did she lose the slippers? Once upon a time, she was crossing a street and there were two vehicles which ran very fast. She had to save herself and while running, she lost the slippers. One slipper was nowhere to be found. The other had been laid hold of by an urchin and off he ran with it. He thought it would do capitally for a cradle when he someday or the other should have children himself. So the little maiden walked on with her tiny naked feet that were quite red and blue from cold. She carried a quantity of matches in an old apron and she had a bundle of them in her hand. Nobody had bought anything of her the whole live long day. No one had given her a single farthing. So, how did she lose her slippers? While she was crossing the streets, somehow they came off. One slipper was lost somewhere, she couldn't find it even after trying hard. The other was right in front of her, but it was stolen away by a young child who was poorly dressed, as the word urchin indicates. What are the meanings of difficult words in this paragraph? Capitally means excellently cradle is a baby's bed or cot typically one mounted on rockers maiden is a girl who is not married yet apron is a protective garment worn over the front of one's clothes and tied at the back the second slipper was stolen away by a poor boy who thought that if someday or the other he would have children himself then he could use the slippers 
to make a baby's bed or a cot. Now the little girl had nothing to put on under her feet. So she walked with her tiny feet and because of the cold winter, it was red and blue. The skin color had changed. She could not bear the cold anymore. She was selling matches. And where had she kept her matches? In an old cloth which she was wearing. She also had few matches in her hand. She tried to sell those by making noise and by attracting the attention of people but nobody really paid attention to her and therefore nobody had given her a single farthing what is a farthing it is nothing but a unit and a coin of united kingdom equal to an old penny as the definition says she crept along trembling with cold and hunger a very picture of sorrow a poor little thing the meaning of crept is move slowly and carefully in order to avoid being heard or noticed. As we already know, it was very cold and she was utterly hungry. And if somebody saw her, somebody would be feeling a lot of pity for that little girl. So she was moving slowly and that's why the word used is crept. The flakes of snow covered her long fair hair which fell in beautiful curls around her neck but of that of course she never once now thought. From all the windows the candles were gleaming and it smelled so deliciously of roast goose for you know it was New Year's Eve. Yes of that she thought. So all the people around her who were in a really celebration mood and therefore they had put up candles besides the window panes and wherever that little girl saw she could see candles gleaming which means shine brightly especially with reflected light goose is a large water bird with a long neck new year's eve as you already know is nothing but 31st december so she could actually smell the meat of roasted goose which people probably had cooked in their houses and the first sentence states that she had nice long and fair hair it also had beautiful natural curls but because of the cold and hunger of which she was suffering she didn't really notice her beautiful hair all she could think of is food and celebration in a corner formed by two houses of which one advanced more than the other she seated herself down and covered together her little feet she had drawn close up to her but she grew colder and colder and to go home she did not venture for she had not sold any matches and could not bring a farthing of money from her father she would certainly get blows and at home it was cold too for above her she had only the roof through which the wind whistled even though the largest cracks were stopped with straw and rags. Let's check out the difficult words here. What is the meaning of coward? Coward is to crouch down in fear. Venture is a risky or a daring journey or undertaking. So. If you are planning to go on a trek or maybe a water park or a ride through the jungle you say I'm going on a jungle venture or you can say I'm going on a trekking venture blows is nothing but beating so while she was trying to sell her matches now that nobody was buying her matches what she did is she eventually settled herself in between the corner of two houses and she cowered together why did she cower together because she was scared she was scared because she was unable to sell any of her matches and she was afraid that if she went home empty-handed without earning a penny her father would beat her up 
and at her house it was cold too. Why was there cold at her house? Because her house was not really that good. It had cracks on the roofs and those cracks were stopped by straw and rags and other random material through which air still came in. So she didn't really want to go home at this point. Her little hands were almost numbed with cold. Oh, a match might afford her a world of comfort if she only dared take a single one out of the bundle, draw it against the wall and warm her fingers by it. She drew one out. Wrist. How it blazed, how it burned. It was warm, bright flame like a candle as she held her hands over it. It was a wonderful light. It seemed really to the little maiden as though she were sitting before a large iron stove with burnished brass feet and brass ornament at top. The fire burned with such blessed influence, it warmed so delightfully. The little girl had already stretched out her feet to warm them too. But the small flame went out, the stove vanished. She had only the remains of the burned out match in her hand. As we know, it was extremely cold. She had to figure a way out to keep herself warm and a little hot to maintain her body temperature. Let's check out the difficult words in this paragraph. Numb is deprived of the power of physical sensation. So there comes a point in your life when you actually feel lost, when you actually feel nothing at all. There are no feelings. So you say, I am numb. I am feeling numb right now. The meaning of burnish is polish by rubbing. So, as we know, she had settled herself at the corner of two houses. And then she suddenly thought, why am I suffering so much? Why can't I light the matchstick which I have? So, she lit a match. She took single one out of the bundle and this is the sound that it produced and when it burned it felt so good because it was freezing temperature the te temperature had dropped too much it was maybe minus 10 minus 20 degrees celsius at your place in the united kingdom and as soon as it flamed she put her hands over it she looked at the flame it looked so beautiful and her imagination lit up as she was suffering. She imagined herself sitting in front of an iron stove, which is usually there in the houses of United Kingdom. There is always a fireplace where you can settle yourself and warm yourself because the temperature is usually low. So as she lit the candle, her imagination went in a wonder world and she imagined herself sitting in front of an iron stuff and warming herself. She felt extremely delightful. So in her imagination, she was stretching out her hands and her feet and her body. But while she was imagining what happened, a small flame, the matchstick she was holding, it eventually went out up to the verge that her hand was about to get burned. So she put off that matchstick. She rubbed another against the wall. It burned brightly and where the light fell on the wall, the wall became transparent like a wheel. Let's check out the meaning here. If you look at the synonym, it says curtain or cover so that she could see in the room. On the table was spread a snow white tablecloth. Upon it was a splendid porcelain service and the roast goose was steaming famously with its stuffing of apple and dried plums. And what was still more capital to behold was the goose hopped down from the dish, reeled about on the floor with knife and fork in its breast till it came up to the poor little girl when the match went out and nothing but thick cold damp wall was left behind she lighted another match now there she was sitting under the most magnificent christmas tree it was still larger 
and more decorated than the one which she had seen through the glass door in the rich merchant's house. We know that she was suffering with extreme cold and for that she had used one of the matchsticks from the matchbox which she was selling. Now that was already put off, it had already died, so she took out another one. And how did she burn the second matchstick? She rubbed it against the wall and because of friction it started burning. It burned brightly and her imagination again started to work. The light from the match, it fell on the wall beside which she was sitting. And suddenly the brick wall, according to her imagination, became transparent. She could see through the wall. So that's why they have written transparent like a wheel. She could see into the room, not in reality, but in her imagination. And she could see that a nice tablecloth was there. And on the table and upon the tablecloth, there was a porcelain dish and cups and all the necessary vessels used for dinner because it was evening and roast goose a bird a roasted goose was cooked and steaming steams or smoke was coming out nice little smell was coming out and what was it stuffed with apples and dried plums and what was still more capital meaning liable to death or penalty that is a primary meaning but the actual meaning is excellent so what was more excellent to see let me change the meaning here behold is to see what was more excellent to see was the goose hop down from the dish so it's not the actual goose that is hopping down from the table from the porcelain dishes but it's just her imagination that a roasted goose is coming to life and coming out of the dish from the table and it also is carrying a knife and a fork in its breast till it came up to the poor girl where she was sitting so this indicates how hungry the poor girl was she was so hungry that she is imagining the goose a roasted goose coming to life and coming to her so that she could eat it and savor the taste when the match went out and nothing but thick cold damp wall was left behind so as we know the match eventually lit out and then her imagination died with the second match she lit another match what did she see in the third match she saw that she was sitting under a beautiful Christmas tree this was all coming out of her imagination. She lit a match and because of the brightness of the third match, she imagined a nice and huge and beautiful Christmas tree. It was absolutely nice and decorated. She had seen one Christmas tree before, but the Christmas tree which she was imagining at the moment was more beautiful than she had ever seen in her entire life. Thousands of lights were burning on green branches. Gaily colored pictures such as she had seen in the shop windows looked down upon her. The little maiden stretched out her hand towards them when the match went out. The lights of Christmas tree rose higher and higher. She saw them now as stars in heaven. One fell down and formed a long trail of fire. So we know that she had imagined a Christmas tree. And the tree had branches on which there were lights burning. So somebody had decorated it with beautiful lights. What is the meaning of gaily colored pictures? Is cheerful or lighthearted? So there were pleasant colors all over the Christmas tree. So she had seen such colors while she was trying to sell her matches in the shop windows. Now she tried to feel those colors and lights in the Christmas tree but what happened? The match went out. So it's all in her imagination. First she imagined what? 
she imagined a stove in the second matchstick in the light of the second matchstick she imagined a roasted goose and in the third one she imagined a nice beautiful decorated christmas tree so just imagine a little girl trying to foresee these things she's trying to look how high is the christmas tree and she could see that it is taller taller and taller now as she reached at the top as her imagination made her reach to the top of the christmas tree eventually the christmas tree faded and now she is seeing stars in the heaven she is seeing or imagining a clear sky with so many stars and one star like a comet it came down and fell and while it was falling it left a long line behind so it's like a streak of star you must have seen a comet or a meteor how it leaves behind line so she saw a similar star falling down someone is just dead said the little girl for her old grandmother the only person who had loved her and who was now no more had told her that when a star falls a soul ascends to god there was only one person whom she loved dearly and it it was her old grandmother who had eventually died she was no more that's why it's written in past tense had loved and her grandmother had told her that if you see a star like this leaving a trail of line behind it just means that a person had died and a person is one with god she drew another match against the wall it was again light and in the luster there stood the old grandmother so bright and radiant so mild with such an expression of love so this was the third matchstick until she saw the christmas tree but now she was looking at the sky and she saw a stars falling down she imagined her grandmother coming in front of her she drew another match against the wall she lit it up and now her imagination made her see her own grandmother in front of her she was looking so beautiful bright and radiant with glowing skin and so much joyful wearing a nice expression of love for that little girl so here it also indicates that the poor girl was longing for someone to love her and that was only one person her grandmother grandmother cried the little one oh take me with you you go away when the match burns out you vanish like a warm stuff like the delicious roast goose and like the magnificent christmas tree and she rubbed the whole bundle of matches quickly against the wall for she wanted to be quite sure of keeping her grandmother near her and the matches gave such a brilliant light that it was brighter than at noonday never formerly had the grandmother been so beautiful and so tall she took the little maiden on her arm and both flew in brightness and in joy so high so very high and then above was neither cold nor hunger nor anxiety they were with god this little girl is in extreme pain because of cold because of hunger while she is just sitting at the corner of two houses and trying to keep herself warm by lighting matches after matches after matches she is imagining various things and now once she lit up matchsticks she saw her own grandmother who looked very lovable so now because she's immature she is young she is complaining grandmother why are you going away as soon as the matchstick turns off please stay with me so this is not her grandmother in reality but it's her imagination because she is in extreme pain 
she is in so much pain that she is seeing dead people and especially the one that loved her dearly her own grandmother so while she lit up the matchstick she saw her grandmother and then she complained as to why she was going away as soon as the match was put off to keep the imagination of her grandmother alive she again lit the matchstick she felt nice because you can imagine the sun light at the noon time it's so bright you have to close your eyes but when she lit up the matchstick it gave so much of light that it was brighter than the sunlight which you see during the noon and who appeared in her imagination it was her own grandmother her grandmother in her own imagination is taking the little maid in her arms and they flew in brightness and in joy so high now what does that mean the girl because of cold and hunger dies although she is imagining various beautiful things but this line indicates that she eventually dies of hunger and dies of cold and then because she had died imagining her grandmother she died in peace and because she was already dead there was neither cold nor hunger nor anxiety they were in heaven along with god they had merged with god but in the corner at the cold hour of dawn sat the poor girl with rosy cheeks and with smiling mouth leaning against the wall frozen to death on the last evening of the old year stiff and stark sat the child there with her matches of which one bundle had burned she wanted to warm herself people said no one had slightest suspicion of what beautiful things she had seen no one even dreamed of the splendor in which her grandmother she had entered on the joys of a new year let's check out the difficult words you should know the meaning of dawn you should know the difference between dawn and dusk what is dawn when you see the first light of the sun in the morning that is called dawn and when the sun sets the light that you see is called dusk so here as we know it was night time it was midnight when all of these things happened when all she imagined so when people were already in their houses maybe sleeping or celebration uh, or celebrating this little girl had been one with god so in the corner at the cold hour of dawn early morning during the wee hours they say sat the poor girl did she actually sit no she was dead with rosy cheeks and smiling mouth leaning against the wall she had imagined a lot of things so her death was peaceful because it was cold her body had been frozen she was stiff and stark the meaning of stark is severe or bare in appearance so she looked rough with her matches she had all her matches intact in her apron and in her hands while she was imagining things she had already used one full matchbox people did understand that she wanted to warm herself and so she used the matchbox but did anyone really helped her when she was alive and in need of help no she didn't they only talked about her they only showed sympathy when she died no one had the slightest suspicion people couldn't really predict the type of imagination she had because she had seen a stuff a christmas tree a roasted goose her grandmother stars heavens nobody could ever think about the imagination that she had while she was dying splendor in which her grandmother she had entered on the joys of new year so because we know that it was 31st december she would be the happiest person because of her imagination because she imagined beautiful things and died and according to her imagination it was her grandmother that took her to heaven in the starry skies 
so friends this is a wonderful short story if you've understood do let me know if you have doubts mention it in comment section and please let me know any chapter or poem or section of grammar maybe that you don't understand and i will be extremely happy to help i thank you for watching and listening i hope you have a wonderful